Welcome to The Next Level. My name is Nick Siegel, and we are broadcasting our inaugural podcast here from the Brentwood location of our Partners Trust Company. And the focus of these podcasts is on taking your business and your personal life to the next level. Uh, we will engage with scintillating conversation with articulate people that will talk about a series of subjects. And today, the subject is open houses. And why even do an open house? So why don't we start right there? Let me introduce the panel to you. Uh, we've got Katrina Webb from our Beverly Hills office. We have Kate McQueen from our Brentwood location. We have Ron Smith from Beverly Hills. And we have uh, Ben Kelly from our La Quinata location. So welcome to you all. You. Let's get right to it. And the first question is, why even do an open house? Are they antiquated? Are they still relevant? Um, ben, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on that? Well, definitely I feel open houses are valuable. The three main things I feel are most important about open houses are, first and foremost, to try to sell that house. That's why you're there. However, the other, the, the other two things I think are most important are to get feedback from all the people that are coming through to report mm -hmm. back to the seller, and then also to pick up new clients whether they're new sellers, new buyers, or even potential referrers. So I view it as three different processes as part of holding an open house. Great. Great. Kate, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think those are all excellent points. I also think it's a great way to engage with the community. Mm. Um, and really, from a personal branding standpoint, it's a great way to get out there and really interact with buyers that are out there. Um, you know, you can have your name on a billboard or on a bus bench, but it, there's nothing like really getting in front of someone and engaging with them. Um, face to face, mm -hmm. so I think open houses are great for that. I think sellers expect them too, um, and so like with what you said, feedback wise, especially if you have a seller that's maybe unreasonable with their price point or other factors, that feedback can be critical. You touched on something about branding, and I think that's that's an important component. Uh, can you articulate a little bit more about that? How does that? How does how do you bring your brand to an open house? So, it, you know, it's kind of like dating. Your branding, you know, when you walk in, it's your first impression. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the presentation you have laid out, what materials you have out, it's all very curated. And obviously, it's, you know, it's particular to that seller. You know, you want to reflect kind of what they want, you know, how they want to present their home. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, what materials you bring and how you represent yourself. People that come through these open houses, especially if you work a certain area, you're going to see again and again and again. And I think consistency in that branding is really important. Great so. point. Great. Katrina, your perspective. I am a big fan of open houses for the reasons already mentioned. And I think it's just a great way to meet people. Um, mm. I absolutely think, you know, open houses is the best way to expose the property mm -hmm. and I do think sellers expect it um, I'm a big fan I I do a lot of open houses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ron um, I'd say open houses it's probably the number one opportunity for a newer a newer associate uh, to generate business uh, to expand on their own brand um, as we talked about earlier uh, but you've you've got to be you've got to be engaged and you've got to want it. I mean, you know, the, the, the question you've got to ask yourself when you wake up in the morning, you know, how badly do I want to do business today? Mm. Um, what does that mean? Right now, our open houses are from two to five. So, you know, are you going to show up at two o'clock scattered, or are you going to show up at one thirty prepared? You know, what does that look like? Um, we've got when we hold an open house, uh, we'll put eighteen directional signs out. Uh, we will. Uh, four or five days before, we'll put uh, we'll either do a direct mailer uh, to the homes around it. Uh, we'll do uh, door hangers, uh, you know, that are four color, um, or we'll send out a uh, send out a postcard. We'll have those hand delivered. So we're preparing for the moment, and that way, when we're when we're at the open house, you know, we've uh, we've done preparation, and we know we're going to get we're going to get a fairly significant turnout, uh, and 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 our intention is to generate business on that day. Uh, typically, the, the directional signs are put out at uh, 7 or 8 in the morning. There are companies that do it for you. So now people have seen, seen our name. And then when they come to the open house, uh, Kate, uh, um, uh, Kate does it best. She's prepared. You've got, you know, you know, you've got, you've got, uh, uh, you've got cookies or a treat there. You've got, you know, the presentation. You're ready. And, and you've got to be, you, you've got to be ready. 
It stay. It sounds like though you your preparation takes place even before the morning of with the directional signs. It's a, t talk a little bit more about what is that prep in terms of uh, introducing the open house to the the immediate neighborhood in advance. You talked about door hangers. You talked about uh, other things. What when does an open house really start for you? A Sunday open house and Saturdays are fantastic. Also, mm. a. Uh, um, a Sunday open house for uh, for me starts on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, make the decision Monday morning what's going to be held open on Sunday. That gives you the whole week to prepare for it. Uh, like to pull, uh, I like to pull comparables on what's going on in the uh, on the street. Uh, there's nothing that makes you look better when somebody comes in and says, "What's what's the house across the street going for?" Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to saying, "I'm not sure. Let me look into it." You've got the you've you've got the numbers in the area, so you're immediately establishing or defining yourself as an, an expert in the area, whether it's your listing or not. Mm. Um, I really encourage people, uh, if given the opportunity, to hold open houses, uh, if not on a Sunday, on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and then do the the preparation, uh, Nick, ahead of time. Great point, Ben. Any um, Ron touched on a lot of things. What what type of specific preparation? Do you do, and how do you then distinguish yourself? If I walk into a, a, a Ben Kelly open house, do I know it's a Ben Kelly open house specifically because of the things you've done in advance? Well, I think, like Ron said, starting about seven days in advance, you're also determining what kind of advertising you're gonna do for that open house too. Mm -hmm. You're not only doing um, newspaper advertising, you're doing, I'm, I'm, we're always sending out uh, email blasts to our clients, people in the neighborhood, clients we know that live in that neighborhood. We're also putting on Facebook so all of our friends and clients will, will know that we're going to be there. And then once they get to the property, it's all about the, the time and effort you've put into designing the flyer. Mm -hmm. What kind of additional materials do you have? Do you have the floor plan? Everyone always wants a floor plan. If you don't have it these days, people look like you're, you're not prepared. Mm -hmm. And then you also want to have a list of home improvements. The more you have that you look like you've done the work to make the buyer's job easier mm. to determine whether this is a good house for them, the better off you are. Nowadays, we're also doing a list of open houses in the community that day. Mm -hmm. A lot of buyers that are coming in, when we give them, they've already come to this house, they've seen it, and when we tell them these are the other ones that are open here in the community today as well, they really appreciate that. Right. Because then they look at it as though we're not just trying to, to jam them into this house, and if they don't like this, we don't want any part of them. We're also telling them these are other ones that are available, and, and we brand that with our information on there. So they also say, well, this person is a resource for us here in the community. So that's a great point, a, a, a takeaway. Uh, so, Kate, what do you and Dana do in terms of if I've come to your open house? What am I? What do I have the opportunity to walk away with me after I've been to your open house? So I think a signature, signature, and again with consistency, a signature piece that someone can take away. Dana really likes cookies, uh -huh. so she does. We do cookies at every open house with like our sticker on it that has our contact information, and that you know people take and you know they they may put it in their car and then they see the information and it's like it has the same logo though. So all of our branding is consistent with that logo. Uh -huh. You know we have an information fact sheet with the upgrades or when it was built or things that the sellers want to convey about the property, and that has our you know our branding as well as you know that that consistent thread throughout everything we present at an open house. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, waters, cookies, those are uh -huh. pretty So less, sturdy, less informational, <laughs> more for the little echidna saw that yeah, wants to feel yeah. happy. Well, both. I mean, I think it's really both. I think, you know, they, people do come through with kids, you know, sure. and that's a, the kids are bored at open houses. They're running around or they're touching things and looking at things. That's something, you know, you give them water, either it's a, it's a talking point, you know, their kid or will have nuts or something, you mm -hmm. know, that same sticker. And then, you know, you start talking, oh, where do, where does he go to school? Oh, that's interesting. You know, da, 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 da. Sure. It's a, it's a good point to kind of start a, start a dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into engagement in a moment. Uh, Katrina, what do you what do you? I like actually to do? have a question for the panel. I wonder yep. how you all feel about Twilight Open Houses. So, for those that may not be uh, aware of that, it's just uh, obviously towards the twilight hour. Uh, like on a Tuesday after brokers caravan, right, so you've brokers done have the, come through mm -hmm. and and you've exposed the property to the brokerage community, and then having a wine or cheese or. I'm just curious. So maybe that five to seven. You've done you've done eleven to two if it's on a caravan day, but now you're talking about for, from a broker perspective. Oh, well, once the brokers have come through, especially if it's a hot property, mm -hmm. you know, letting 
buyers come sure. through after work. Great. Mm -hmm. So let's That's let's let's touch on that. So, uh, Kate, what what are your thoughts on that? I think it depends on the property. I think if it's well lit and it has a beautiful you know backyard and it shows well in the evening, mm -hmm. then absolutely, I think that's a great opportunity to you know expose it more. People after work, doctors. I mean, the people who can't get out necessarily during the day or on the weekends are challenging. Um, that's a great opportunity to show the house. Just curious. If it people. doesn't, yeah. yeah. Do you, so, uh, Ron, what kind of do you do you believe in twilights, and, and what kind of turnout do you get? Let's say if you get a uh, hundred people at an open house on a Tuesday uh, from eleven to two, what number of people will come uh, historically to that twilight open thereafter? It all depends. I like the idea. I like uh, what what Kate said specifically. It's absolutely property specific mm -hmm. uh, because depending upon where the setting is, depending upon how it shows at night. Uh, and the, the, the traffic pattern, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there are set locations. And that's, you know, that's kind of pre-production on it when you're deciding. I also think it's a great opportunity to promote the property to, uh, to other agents at other, uh, at other companies. Uh, but to do that, you got to send out invitations, mm -hmm. you've got you, you, you've to plan for it, mm -hmm. and there's got to be a reason for people to come. Mm -hmm. I remember you had an open house recently, and... Uh, in every single room, you had the announcement that there was going to be a twilight open house in that room. <laughs> so just to be a pop-off, I said, so when I came back, I said, so Ron, is there a, a twilight open house in this property? <laughs> I believe you gave me a gesture, but uh, a loving gesture, not the least, but you certainly made it abundantly clear there was going to be a twilight that day. You know, there, there, you won't get any surprises with me. <laughs> That's you know, right. Exactly. You know exactly uh, what's going ben, on. Ben, you have any stats on, do you, when do you believe in twilights and uh, what percentage come at that evening versus during the morning? Well, it definitely depends on the property. Certain properties are going to lend themselves better to that. I think what you're trying to do is also show the house to prospective buyers and give them that sense of what the property can be. Is it a great entertainer's house? Mm -hmm. If it is, they're coming to this house, they're seeing this great party, this great event that you put on, they're picturing themselves being able to hold hold parties for their clients and friends at that property as well. So I think it's, it's basically giving them an insight into what they can do once they own that property. Right. And especially view properties, properties that are well lit, have nice patios, outdoor setting. Um, absolutely, it can be a great idea. Great. I, I think you have to. You you always have to assume you're always on camera. You're always auditioning, and so anything that you do, any preparation you do for an open house, any marketing you do, is a direct reflection of who you are, mm -hmm. of who the company is, and it, it it'll it'll either work for you tenfold or it'll demonstrate you know your deficiencies. So I think it's very important. This is a great point, and, and it, it, let's transition into the objective of the open house. Uh, you you touch on it, Ron, as an audition possibility. Who are you auditioning for? Uh, two groups. One, uh, for neighbors, neighbors in the community, uh, and also for anybody that might be contemplating selling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, buyers coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting. Um, I don't know about you all, but but uh, there, th oftentimes with an open house, the knee-jerk response when you ask somebody if they're working with somebody, absolutely, I'm working with someone. Mm -hmm. um, that what that tells me that that's a great sign for me that tells me that they're looking to buy a home and so it's a great opportunity for me to talk to that person let them know what they get with mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and the reason they should do business with me mm -hmm. what they've done by telling me that they're looking regardless of who they say they're looking with it's open it's open the doors as an opportunity to talk to them to uh, to certainly because they're serious about because possibly. yeah because whether you know they work with that whether they actually have someone or not but if they have someone obviously we're going to honor the relationship they have. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, to that regard as well, whenever somebody says they're working with an agent, I always ask, who is your agent? Great point. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they stutter, uh -huh. <laughs> then then I know that maybe they're not getting everything they're looking for from that agent. <sighs> and or maybe they don't know, that maybe they just have been told, Lee, I say you're working with someone so that the broker at that open house will leave you alone. And the flip side is I know a lot of the other brokers in my area, so if they mention a name that I know, oh, you're in great hands, and I know who to follow up with. Uh -huh. Great for point. Feedback for the seller. Mm -hmm. I, I th let's touch on this for a second as well. Someone walks in, and from their perspective, no one wants to be sold anything. Mm -hmm. So how do you warm the waters up in, in those first impressions? And we talked about branding. We talked about the look and the feel, the cookies, whatever the information is that you bring forward. At some point, there's a transition where you see an opening where to engage more in conversation. So 
Kate, when you're sitting on an open house and if someone says they're not working with someone or they're, you're not quite sure, and you, as Katrina says, you ask that question, how do you then start to shift the conversation towards being of service and assistance? So I think, it, you know, it's already kind of an invasive thing, walking into someone else's home, walking mm -hmm. through their bedroom, opening their closets. I think starting the conversation, and it depends on the person. You kind of have to gauge and get a read of what they're like. And, I mean, it's all, you pick up on cues, social, you know, a lot of it's body language. Um, but I like to start the conversation with something that's not so salesy and aggressive mm -hmm. and confrontational in your face. You know, if they're admiring a piece of art, oh, that's a, you know, Jeff Coons, are you familiar? Oh, that's interesting. You studied art history at Pomona. Do, you know, and then start the building report that way. Mm. Um, and then, you know, shift, shift gears to, uh, do you live in the area? Oh, okay. How long have you been looking? Did, you know, and and you know, shift it back towards what I'm there to do, which is sell a house. Sure. Um, and then you know, it's just like establishing a friendship. You know, you just build a rapport. You start a conversation, and I let them do most of the talking. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. Important is letting them talk about themselves and give you the information and just kind of asking questions um, and listening, genuinely. And Great. Ben, what's, 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 how do you make that transition? And if you'd also speak to what is your goal in an open house? Well, first of all, when people walk in the door, the first thing I do is I say, hello, uh -huh. how are you doing? Thank you for coming. Always a good start. Yeah. The reason I say thank you for coming, I want to let them know that I appreciate the fact that they took the time and effort to come to the property. Sure. Then I also introduce myself. I say my name and reach out to shake their hand. The reason I do that is because then they really have no choice but to tell me their name. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to ask. You right. Just when you introduce yourself, then they all of a sudden turn around, and give you their name. Now I try to make a mental note of that, write it down if they leave. Mm -hmm. So when they're leaving later on, I can I can address them by name. They're always appreciative of the fact that you remember their name. How many of you remember their name? Actually, people, some someone will say their name to me, and I go whoop. Oftentimes, it goes right out the window for me. But that's why sometimes I'll even jot down a note when they're walking throughout the house, so that when they leave. I remember, and I, I jot it down, or if I overhear them talking with each other, with their agent, I'll make a note so later on I'll be able to address them by name. Great. I think people always appreciate that. My goal when doing an open house is always to get anywhere between two to five leads at that open house, whether it's uh, buyers. Mm -hmm. Right now there are so many buyers coming through the open houses that are unattended, yeah. that are free agent buyers as we call them. Mm -hmm. They just want somebody who can get them the property, get them the information. There, there are so many buyers in our area that are, that are not necessarily working with a buyer's agent, at least think that's the best strategy for them. So my job is to try to convert them into my clients. Also, all the other people coming through, we send out mailers the week, the week before about mm -hmm. the open house so that a lot of people are coming our neighbors. They may not even know that they're interested in selling until they see the high price that's on the market for. And then they, they realize, well, maybe I'll sell mine as well. So I always, even the nosy neighbors as they introduce themselves, sure. I, I, I also treat them as potential sellers. And then even people that just random that come in, they may refer somebody to you, even if they're not ever gonna buy or sell, they may know somebody who's moving to the area right. and having met you, uh, end up referring somebody to you. So my goal is always between two to five people. Great, Katrina, what's your objective? My number one objective is to sell the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, beyond that, uh, I'm looking to make connections. I've, I've grown a, a little bit selective in my years, and mm. so I really want, um, people that there's a rapport with. Uh, so <clears throat> when people come through, I tend to introduce myself. Would you like the grand tour? Would you like to wander? Um, I'm not a huge stickler for people signing in because they'll sign in a fake name if they don't want to, has been my experience. Um, and then I either give them the grand tour and that's an opportunity to ask questions about what they're looking for, who are they looking for, um, if they're neighbors, how long have they been here, um, those sorts of questions. And again, it's, and I look for common commonalities um, and, and just trying to make a connection, mm -hmm. um, which I can then follow up on. And then if there's a connection, I, did you sign in? Yeah. Wonderful, can I read it? Uh -huh. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I'll follow up with the answers to you know their questions and then try and build a rapport uh, after that. Right, great, and Ron? Um, it's interesting. My my, uh, my goal would be to get one or two, make, make one or two connections that, that are meaningful. <laughs> I I don't ask people to sign in, uh, and when they come through, um, I agree. They're, if, if, if they're going to sign in, they're going to sign in. You, you want to find out, uh, you, you know someone's engagement by the amount of conversation they have with you. Mm -hmm. And I was talking earlier about being, uh, uh, you know, being on or being on stage or, or, or auditioning. What I, what I really mean by that is 
the, the more you know about the house, the more you know about the community, the more you know about activity, that speaks for itself. That will elevate your game and people will, will, uh, will be attracted to it. It's uh, that, and, and at the, the one thing that I've realized over the years, it, it really is about connection. And you either, people want to work with people they like, mm -hmm. period. People want to work with, with, with individuals that they think are going to look out for their best interests. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you, you create that, that, uh, uh, that energy by, by knowing the product and, and by knowing, uh, knowing uh, your facts. Yeah, great point. So just quick, uh, do you ask everyone to sign in when they come into the open house, Katrina? Not necessarily. Okay. Kate? I do, but I don't push it. Uh-huh. And Ron, you, you no. spoke at that point? I don't know. Yeah. Great. So it, it's more about, because to your point, Katrina, yeah, they're going to write the, a, a real name, a fictitious name. It's more about the relationship you gain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nick, I'll tell, you, yeah. I'll tell you one of the things I, I, uh, I picked up from Joseph Montemorano uh, years ago. And I'll, um, I'll have my iPhone with me, mm -hmm. and you come in. Mm -hmm. We're talking, or we're engaging in conversation. Uh, the, best way, the best way that I, can, that, I, that, that I can honor the conversation is by asking you your name, writing it down. Uh, now, if I want, if, 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 if I'm the person that wants to engage with you, not yeah. vice versa. Mm -hmm. And if I do, then I, I clearly want to get additional information. Mm -hmm. uh, let me. What's the best? What's the best number the, that I can reach you with? Mm -hmm. uh, and then on emails, let's uh, let's get your. Uh, what's the best email for you? And I've got it on. My, I've got it on my phone. So ideally, by the end of that open house, I've got two or three meaningful contacts on my phone, and I'll take notes too, mm -hmm. and I'll write down, you know, uh, a little tells that'll that'll remind me. And ideally, you've put that in uh, through the the pocket assistant. And so it goes right to the CRM, and now you've captured them. Well, right there you there. go. There so you now go. we're just playing with the house's money at that point. Yeah. Great. So let's talk about expertise for a second. I, you know, I was always amazed when I would do open houses. I could, I could get people to trust me to get in my car just because I was nice and I smiled at them. Let's get together. We'll go. We'll go look at houses together. It's amazing the the threshold to gain rapport and access to people and their trust. How, let's let's step that up. Think about the top two or three things you do to define your expertise as it relates to that house. Is it statistics? Is it community knowledge? Is it um, facts about the house? What are those things that, that, that your absolute go-tos that have served you well in building not only rapport, but a, an enhanced level of confidence with that individual? Katrina, thoughts? Knowing the inventory mm -hmm. is, I think, the number. I mean, of course, you know the house that ideally you know the house that you're sure. selling and you're representing. So uh, knowing the inventory, knowing the community, um, those have served me very well. Great. Okay. Um, I think it's all of those things. I think it's really identifying yourself as an ambassador. I get questions at open houses. You know, I had a woman one time with two young kids, and she's like, where is the closest market where I can run out and get milk, mm -hmm. even a gas station? You know, little things like that, knowing, oh, right around the corner, you know, you take this street and you turn left, it's right there. You could even walk. Mm -hmm. Knowing, just driving the neighborhood, knowing the community really well. Um, schools, I think, are great. Exactly. Um, schools. Yeah, you know, neighbors, the demographics. Obviously, you're not going to speak to the demographics, but knowing and being aware of everything sure. um, is really important in addition to the comps, properties that have sold, pockets, um, all of that. And are those goddess for you? I mean, you've got the, you, you have inventory, you've got that with absolutely. you. Absolutely. Fingertips. Yeah, right. absolutely. Ron, anything else you um, add to that? I agree with all that. I also think it's critical. Uh, if it's not your listing and you're holding it open, yeah. uh, it's incumbent upon you to set up an appointment with the listing agent to see that property days ahead of time mm -hmm. because there's there's no greater way to demonstrate your expertise than knowing more about the house than you're sitting than the listing agent uh, and it's really important mm -hmm. so do that and we put together uh, uh, we put together uh, an 11 by 16 placard uh, that you, you can get you can get it taken care of uh, our marketing department does it beautifully and it it uh, it covers the eight or nine hot points of the property. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have that typically sitting in the kitchen. Uh, and then, again, the mantra here is demonstrate your knowledge of the market, of the property, uh, and your expertise. Great. Ben, anything you'd like to add? Well, I think you also want to know that the ins and outs of that property, not just the square footage, bedroom, bathroom count. You want to know the plumbing, the electrical, the heating and air, the roof. Because mm -hmm. buyers are always asking these in-depth questions that if all you know, it, whether you're holding someone else's property open or if you haven't even asked your seller 
all the ins and outs of that house, you're going to be in a position where you're going to have an awkward answer and you're going to have to stutter and stammer. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, there is a situation where I don't know an answer to a, a question that a buyer may ask. And I use that as an opportunity. I'll say, you know, that's a fantastic question. If you give me your email address, I can get that answer and I'll shoot it over to you right away. Great. And what I'll also do before the open house, I'll make sure I tell my sellers, I need you available during that two hour window. If anything ever comes up, they ask me some odd, unusual question that I don't know the answer. I want to be able to ask you right away and get that answer even while they're still there at the property. Mm -hmm. Before, what would happen is if they asked me something I wouldn't know, but now I, I can always get the seller on the phone right away. Great. So let me stay with you, Ben, for a second. So this idea of Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com, all of these third-party portals that are, are supposedly attracting uh, the attention of buyers and the idea of building relationships through those uh, agents that will pay to be on those on those sites uh, in association with that property. To what degree um, does a buyer walking into your open house have a buy, have a representation based on one of those portals, or are they still open to talking with you, and especially if you've given them your expertise, to to make them be a client of yours? Is Zillow, are these portals taking our clients away from us, or do we still have that opportunity at open houses? Well, Zillow and other websites, they don't know all the ins and outs of the property. They know square mm -hmm. footage, bedroom, bathroom count, lot size, but they don't know floor plan, they don't know condition of houses. Mm -hmm. So sometimes somebody will say, hey, the one down the street sold for 50,000 more, or or the one down the street sold for 200,000 less. Well, if you if we as agents have been in those properties and we know them really well, we can then say, well, that one didn't have this or that one was not upgraded. This one has a brand new remodeled kitchen. So those websites don't know the specifics. They just know the general overall market snapshot. Sure. Ron, what, what have you found? Is there a conversion of someone says, I saw your house on Zillow. Can you, can you flip that to your advantage? That's a great question because I, I, I got to say 95% of the people that we deal with are looking at properties online mm -hmm. uh, and that's the uh, uh, that's their first taste that's their opportunity uh, and I I see it as a benefit for us the, the more opportunities that the public has uh, to get an introduction to properties that will draw them to the open house or draw them to reach out to us mm -hmm. you know the better I, I don't see it as a barrier at all right um, and I got to talk when you when you were talking about knowing the property Listen, uh, nothing makes you look smarter or makes you look sillier uh, than if, uh, if the house you're holding open has got a great wireless sound system. Know how to use the Sonos. Know how to, uh, know how to work it, okay? You know, uh, you can either gain massive credibility or uh, uh, be the butt of a joke if you don't. So, you know, do your homework ahead of time. Sure. Zillow, the portals, all of those, conversion, how, how, how do you address that? Um, I think it's a great tool to, uh, again, start a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we do. We look for properties. And the element that we bring is the human element. Sure, they can spend their time looking on Redfin, looking on Zillow, going property by property. But chances are we've previewed them at Caravan or we've seen them as pockets. Mm -hmm. We Once we get an idea of what they're looking for, we can, you know, specifically go through and hand pick properties that we know they'll be interested in. And so that's our advantage. You know, set them up on a portal, send them, you know, listings. But we can also go through and, you know, do hot sheets. And I think that's, you know, I, I always offer to set people up on a portal. And I've had, we've had great success with that. Mm -hmm. So. Katrina? Um, I, I think that those are great consumer products. Yeah. But um, the information is often inaccurate. And so uh, that's the conversation that I bring with regard. Mm -hmm. And I love it when people come in. I ask them, you know. Did you see our signs? Did you see our ads? Oh, I saw it on Redfin. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. They're probably not working with an agent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a, a, a good, good, point. That's a good a clue. Point. <laughs> and, and also an opportunity then to talk about the, the Partners Trust uh, app. Uh, that's right. That's so right. let's talk about Let's do a quick <laughs> plug for uh, our technology. Do you use that when you're at an open house to talk with people and, and show them? I absolutely do. Excellent. When they'll, they'll say, what about that one up there? Mm -hmm. And I'll know the property but I might not remember right off the top of my head the square footage or right. the bed bath count. I usually mm -hmm. I usually remember prices and agents. Mm -hmm. um, so then I can pull out my partner's trust app, which I use in my neighborhood all the time to see what's, because it actually shows commercial and leases as mm -hmm. well. It's very um, thorough. And then I can pull it up right away and say, oh, that one, that one's much smaller than this one actually. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, the floor plan was not fabulous. Uh, so I, I, Love the PTF. Great.
Okay. Do you does it does it serve you? It serves me well not only during open houses but also you know if I'm going to a dinner party or if mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm driving around and I'm like oh that looks interesting it was just you know I pull it up and it's right there at my fingertips on my phone which I have with me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's great. Yeah. Ben? Well, I think when they see the ease and convenience w with which you get information on the spot, yeah, that makes them say, well, I want to be able to have that tool as well. Mm -hmm. And that's an introduction to be able to invite them to to download the app with you as. As their preferred agent, mm -hmm. uh, I think sometimes when I get on the, the app either on my phone or on the iPad, and they see how quickly I'm able to pull up information, they're always surprised that within 10, 30 seconds, I'm able to provide them those details. Great, Ronnie, how's that work for you guys? It's good stuff. Yeah, great. So, all right, so you you got your open house. How, how many of you walk people through, or because uh, I want to talk about security for a moment at open houses, because that's a, a really hot topic. Uh, do you uh, lock the door? At, do people need to knock and be allowed in? Is the front door wide open? And then do you walk them through? Do you invite them to take a tour themselves? How do you deal with those first two beats? And then we'll talk about security thereafter. I think it's important to have all access points open mm -hmm. for, the, for clients to go out on the patio themselves if they're touring the property themselves. and. Um, with my mentees, we actually do talk about security, and I think it's important to, I'm jumping ahead, yeah, but okay. I think it's important to have an exit strategy should you ever need one, which I, I uh, once in 12 years, I had an uncomfortable situation, mm -hmm. which I just waited on the porch while the person walked through the house yeah. and left pretty quickly. And but Do you keep your cell phone with you at all times? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Kate? Um, yeah, I think it's always great to have two people, if possible. Uh -huh. um, that way one person can be in the front greeting people, another can give a tour, or kind of keep eyeballs on every you know area of the house. Depends on the size of the house, it depends on the property. Um, but yeah, I think it's great, if possible, to have two people. And I do like keeping all access points open. It, it has a better flow to the house, it shows better. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to jump ahead to security, but I have, yeah. I Touch on it, go ahead. We'll, yeah. we'll circle so, back on. Uh, you know, yeah, it's good to have your phone on you, but I was holding, I've held house you know open houses in Bel Air where I don't have service mm -hmm. and it's just me there and you know it's not a super busy open house and you know it, it can be um, I found that putting up signs that say you know that the, at the premises is being recorded for the duration of the open house in almost you know every every area of the house has been huge you know I see people looking up and kind of you know just but it, it makes me feel safer um, and I think people are more respectful when they see that mm -hmm. um, I think that's a growing trend. I think whether there's actually a, a camera there's team a there, camera. right? It's, it, there is that <laughs> thought that I don't know any differently. So uh, that's a great point. Um, security. I mean, uh, security for the the possessions of the of the client, but also our own personal security. Yeah. Yeah. Ron, any thoughts on that? Um, Opening. Do you different the different uh, perspective here. Mm -hmm. um, I like to control the flow, and, and so basically what we'll do is we'll walk through the house initially, take a look at it, and I will put um, placards on the uh, the doors uh, or the areas uh, that we don't want them going through. You know, mm -hmm. please do not uh, go through this area. Um, you asked me on the, the house on Cassiano. Yeah. We've got them, we've got them up on, you've got, this house has got eight sets of French doors. So basically, I don't want people going in and out eight different directions. Mm -hmm. The if you know the house, you know the best flow, the, the best the best way to, to guide somebody, and you can do that. Well, you also, to that point, because there was then grass and the, the lawns had just been uh, watered, and now someone's trekking uh, whatever they're going to track back in through the next set of French doors as right. opposed to controlling the flow for wiping a feet and things of that nature. So to do that, and I also, what Kate said earlier, I, I, I think... I think for the benefit of the quality open house, I, I think it's really uh, beneficial to have two people. Mm -hmm. I think it's great to have somebody at the um, uh, at the front greeting, and then somebody else that can walk around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it it the reality of it is is that on an open house, you know, we talked about goals earlier. The the, the goals is to uh, uh, is to promote yourself. Yes, promote the house, uh, but also. Establish whether there's some additional business out there, mm -hmm. and if you can have that that quality time one on one with someone, and allow you know allow your partner to be able to walk the other person around, I, I think it's very beneficial. Yeah, good point. Well, ben. these days open houses are getting busy enough that there's enough people coming through to really make it worthwhile for two or even more people to be there. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you have two different people, a man and a woman, or two different uh, demographics of the agents, sometimes people are coming through are going to vibe better with one or the other. 
So sometimes, like when we hold open houses and there's two of us there, someone comes through and, and, and my wife is, is getting along well with, with the, the wife of the buyer or something like that, we'll just let her take the lead on that. So sometimes I think that's a benefit as well. Sure. And as far as security goes, whenever we do houses that have two stories mm -hmm. or, or large homes with wings, we try to have someone on the other side of the house because these days there are people out there that are still trying to take medicines and jewelry. Mm -hmm. We always tell people, that we, right when we sign the listing agreement, that's always a big thing we talk to them about is make sure you take all your valuables. Anything that's small, that someone can put in a bag, a pocket, a purse, make sure you take that out. Um, so that's, we always tell them that. Do you all do that with your sellers do you, before you have, even start the open house? I think it's good to actually have the seller's initial, the security and insurance part of the listing agreement, it's so it's super clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. When you're holding even another agent's open house, you may want to talk to that agent as well and make sure that they've had that conversation Without with the question. seller. Because even if you've done it, but you're holding someone else, they may not have had that conversation That's with true. their seller. Right. Okay. So we send an email out to all of our clients prior to taking a listing uh -huh. that goes over, you know, how they should prep their house, not only for photos, but for showing it for open houses. And then we offer to come by and help them edit. Um, you know, we'll go through and if they have, you know, jewelry and a night a bedside stand, just say, hey, you know, while we're doing this, it's just it's just a precaution, always better safe than sorry. You know, we do our best to keep eyeballs on everyone that comes through. But, you know, maybe store it at your mom's house for the next several weeks. You just sure. never know. These people, you know, that come through it, and we don't, you know, I don't always say this, but there are, you know, a lot of these people, when you hear about it, are professionals. They know what they're doing. Without so question. just, yeah, we, we offer to come through and help them edit and take things out. Great. So two quick uh, uh, final questions. One, best methodology of follow-up after you've done an open house, mm -hmm. what is the timing with which you follow up, uh, and do you have a system in place for that that has served you well? Katrina? Uh, either that night or first thing the next morning, mm -hmm. um, I will answer questions, send listings, and then I follow up with a phone call a couple days later. And if I haven't had a response, and then I'll follow up again, um, probably before the next weekend, in mm -hmm. case there might be any new listings that have come up, and, and get a response. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay. What Great works well for you? of information that Richard Stearns actually shared with me a few uh -huh. years ago was engaged the night of the open house. Mm -hmm. And I have had great success with that. Um, you know, it's fresh in the buyers, in the people's mind. You just met them that day. Even if they don't check their email that night, you can remember more if it's that night. Um, so even just putting aside an hour, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to go through, write down all the notes about everyone you met, remember it, and really just, you know, send out the emails and get it done. Um, I think that that has served us the best. So your <laughs> schedule time, your open house isn't done at, let's say if it's from two to five, it's not done at 5.15 when you're just packing up. There is, it's you're on duty day. for a little bit more. It's an all day thing. Yep. Yeah. I think that is part of that commitment. Ron, what served you? How do you follow up? That's that's a great point, Kate. Um, I think the uh, the half hour, 45 minutes after the open house, um, I'll text, I'll text the two or three people that I feel like I've connected with, mm -hmm. uh, with, a, with a follow up. Great. So tax works for you. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. I always ask the clients at <coughs> the property what their preferred means of communication is. Great point. Mm -hmm. Most people feel comfortable giving email addresses. They feel it's less invasive. They're getting a lot of emails anyways. But I al always try to get the phone number and the first and last name as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you only get the first name, you're missing out on an opportunity. If you have their first and last name, now you can basically do some research. You can Google them. You can find out where they live. You can find out where they work. Sounds a little stalkerish, but <laughs> at the same time, you'd get to know them a lot better than just their Jim or, or Jane. You, you don't really know who they are. So yeah. I try to get both names, their email and their phone number. And sometimes if they're not comfortable texting, I'll start with the email. And then once we build a little bit rapport, then shift it over to texting so that they know that uh, I'm not just going to text them all day long. It, it's a process there. Great. Okay. Real good. And so think back uh, to an open house where you got a client and then you, you can trace the lineage of the uh, an element of explosion in your business because of that one touch point at an open house. Anybody have uh, a story that, that it, 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 the open house served you beautifully and created a great relationship with someone? Um, 2004, when I got into the real estate business, uh, the mentor that I was working with allowed me to hold an open house for her. Mm -hmm. It was two cities over. It wasn't even in an area that I knew much about. A gentleman came in. He was a college kid. He was probably 21, 22 years old. I met, up a, met him, struck up a relationship. He told me, oh yeah, my parents are gonna buy me a house all cash. I said, you know, my, it was my very first open house I'd ever held. So I was a little bit leery thinking, whose parents buy, their, an open, <laughs> uh, buy them a house? So we, we hit it off, I ended up, 
showing them houses and end up selling that house. Uh-huh. Right now, I'm up to about 13 houses with that family. Wow. wow. Um, the brothers, the sisters, they've sought, bought and sold. And even within the last year, I think we sold two to that family. That's 11, 12 years ago now. It, the, it's just the gift that keeps giving. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was the very first open house I held. Amazing. And that, that also taught me never underestimate somebody. Never assume mm-hmm. that if somebody's mm-hmm. telling you something that they're, they're blowing smoke or that, that they don't. I've had people come through that at first glance, I'm thinking, can you really afford this? But I don't give off that impression because you never know. Someone that looks like they can afford 500,000 can afford 5 million. Great. So you always have to be careful. Got a story? Something you can think of? That I'm not, while you're thinking, I've got one. So uh, I was at an open house in West Hollywood and a guy, uh, 30 years my senior, comes in with a little ponytail and his wife and he's a New York guy and I, I come from New York so I have that in me as well. And we start uh, striking up a conversation. He says, I'm building a house uh, on the next block over. Maybe you should come by and see it afterwards. And so I do. And uh, he wanted me to sell that house but he was looking for one specific comp. Now, because I did my homework and got an off-market sale through the title comps, I then came to him with that sale. He goes, that's the sale that I was looking for. No one else has brought it to my awareness. I'll do business with you. I ended up, well, it took us a year. I brought him an offer for 550 on the house that he wanted 575, didn't take it, market went down. A year later, he took 450 for that house, but I maintained the relationship. He was, the, the wife was a business manager and that became a, a nerve center for me to just, uh, that really elevated my business to uh, on a very, very fast track level. And I've done countless, countless houses over a 20 year career, just from the time that I met them. So it certainly served me very, very well. Jog your memory for uh, a story where it served you well? I'm seeing, so- yeah, Kate? I mean, it's hard to follow both of those stories. Yes. But, <laughs> um, I bought but, an island because of that open house. <laughs> but, go ahead. Uh, I guess the one for me is I, I held an open house in Brentwood. It was a condo last year. And I met a young couple and, you know, just started a conversation, ran into them. I put them up on a portal. Uh-huh. Um, they ended up not buying the unit that we were, had listed, but another unit in the building later that year Mm -hmm. um same building different listing agent they bought it with us and it was kind of i guess it was that moment where it was like open house it showed it showed me and it helped me appreciate the value in open houses because it was just that one you know that one touch point and seeing them and chatting for a few minutes and having you know talking points that you know we could relate on um and then from there you know they bought and sold and now we're leasing Mm -hmm. the property and and great yeah so so Final question as we wrap up, if I'm a new associate, eager, ready to sit in my first open house, what are the top three things you tell me to do, Katrina? See your inventory. Um, If you're new, you need to know your contracts. Uh Um, But for the open house inventory, absolutely knowing the house and be friendly and bring that enthusiasm. Mm, Nice. Kate? Always stand up. Don't be on your phone. Engage. Yes. Oh my goodness, what a great, great tip. Yeah. Be present. Um, Seems like that should be obvious, but yes. Yeah, well, but yeah. it's not. You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, I think, in addition to knowing comps, obviously, knowing the community. Um, and yeah, just be, I think, don't force it. Just let it come, be present, allow people, you know, kind of gauge where people are at, allow them to, to start, um, you know, how they want to see the house and how they want to view it. And don't try to be too salesy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ron? Uh, do your homework, show up early, uh, know that you're going to be there late, and uh, follow up. Great. Yeah. Excellent. Ben? I'd say uh, develop relationships with the other agents in the community. Um, that's very important. Um, uh, as far as the open houses go, I'd say the most important thing you want to do is provide value. Mm-hmm. If you are there figuring you're going to try and get something from these people, and they're gonna come in the door and I'm gonna get them as a client rather than them coming in and you providing value, telling them what you can offer them. Once you do that, then all of a sudden they're realizing I wanna work with him or I wanna work with her because they're giving me something. When someone comes through, I will tell them, uh, look, if I have other properties that are off the market, pocket listings, things like that, if I have those piece of information and price range you're looking in, would that be of interest to you? Mm-hmm. I've never had one person say, no, that's all right, I don't wanna know about those. <laughs> right. They always say, well, absolutely. And then it's an introduction for me to say, let me get your email, and if you only want me to email you, I'll do it that way, but if you're comfortable with texting, I'll, I'll do it that way. 
but I always focus on trying to provide value rather than asking anything from them. Absolutely. I great. think it's, Nick, yeah. I also, Please. that was a great point. I think it's also a wonderful opportunity uh, to be able to network uh, with other agents. Uh, that's, that's the backbone of our business. You know, the relationships that you've got with other, uh, with other agents. So take the time, do the introduction and make sure they know who you are. And I would think if you don't have an open house and you haven't seen all the inventory, use that time to go see that inventory that you haven't seen during that uh, open house period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been fantastic. I want to thank all of you for being so informative and bringing the best of who you are to this. Uh, This wraps up our first podcast in the series of uh, The Next Level. And uh, if you'd like more information, uh, please do be in touch with us. Uh, you're welcome to offer serve up questions to us. You can get us at the Partners Trust at, at Partners Trust or at Nick Siegel and our hashtag TNLcast so that others can follow along with you. Thank you all very much, Thank you. and Thank you. Uh, everybody. Till next time. Thanks so much. Bye bye.